This is the devotional for Saturday, January the 22nd, and the title is A Promise of Hope and a Sure Judgment. It's taken from Isaiah chapter 7 and Isaiah chapter 8. Now, today's devotional may be the first time some have studied Isaiah 7.14 in its context. It's probably one of the most well-known of the verses found in the book of Isaiah. Now, in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, uh, we read, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, consider with me the historical context of that sign, the sign of the virgin birth, that was fulfilled in the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, Isaiah 7 I've subtitled, The King of Kings is Coming. Now, many years had passed from the death of Uzziah that we read about in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1 to the reign of his grandson Ahaz, the son of Jotham, and we find in chapter 7 and verse 1. Now, the two kings are named as contemporaries of Ahaz, and they had conspired to invade in war with Judah. We read Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Romalia, king of Israel, went up towards Jerusalem to war against it, but they could not prevail against it, against Jerusalem. That is the historical context of the prophecy of the virgin birth. You see, as we continue in chapter 7 and verse 2, King Ahaz and all Judah were terrified by the coalition of nations aligned against them. We find that in verse 2. Now, the Lord, ever compassionate towards his people, commanded Isaiah to go with his firstborn son, Shear Jashub, and meet King Ahaz. Now, the prophet's mission was to deliver good news to the king and encourage him, saying, Take heed, be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted. Then Isaiah revealed to King Ahaz four truths regarding Judah's enemies. We find that in verses 4 and 9. The kings of Syria and Ephraim were contemptible and, and nothing more in the sight of God, according to verse 4, than firewood. Now those kings had taken evil counsel together against Judah, and they were set to divide the land of Judah between them and set up a puppet king upon the throne of David. Nevertheless, Ahaz was told the confederacy between Syria and Israel would fail. And in 65 years' time, this is an important prophecy, Israel would be destroyed and the people taken into captivity, chapter 7 and verse 8. Now Isaiah then admonished King Ahaz, If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. That is, you will not continue. And then there was a sign of assurance given. Isaiah 7 and verse 10 through 13. Knowing Ahaz was not a man of faith, the Lord offered to give the king a miraculous sign and assure him all would come to pass as he had promised. The foolish Ahaz, however, he refused to ask for a sign and instead sought an alliance with the king of Assyria, the very nation that would ultimately destroy Israel. We have that prophetic sign in chapter 7 and verse 14. Now, having rejected the Lord, Ahaz, he turned to his own ways and he planned to overcome Israel and Syria. God warned Ahaz in verse 13. Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to be weary men? But will you weary my God also? Because Ahaz had refused to trust the Lord, Ahaz was told God would give uh, his people a miraculous sign. And that sign is in verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. This is a, a prophecy to all Israel, Judah, all of God's people. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Well, forewarning of God's judgment on Israel and Judah, we find in verses 15 through 25 this thought, the sign of a virgin birth of a son who would be named Emmanuel would not be imminent. In fact, seven centuries would pass before Christ was born. And yet the text, however, continued with the prophecy of another son, one whose name would be a testimony of a time of poverty to come. 
And Ahaz was told the diet of his people, and that time would be the diet of the poor, butter and honey. Well, who was his son that would be born that would be a, a fulfillment of this prophecy that Israel would fall? Well, it was none other than the name of Isaiah's second-born son, Mahir Shael Hashbaz, the second-born son of prophet Isaiah. Now, what did his name mean? His name meant they, Assyria, will hasten to spoil. A prophecy that was fulfilled when Israel was destroyed and the people taken captive. Well, Assyria would trouble Judah like swarms of Egyptian flies and stinging bees of Assyria. We read in, in chapter 7, verses 17 and 18. The Assyrians would disgrace Judah. They would impoverish God's people. But to illustrate the poverty that would befall Judah, Isaiah declared farmers would struggle with one milk cow and two sheep, and the land would be overgrown with briars and thorns. Now that brings us to Isaiah chapter 8. Mahir Shael Hashbaz, the son of Isaiah, whose name meant judgment is coming. How long before that prophecy would come to pass? No more than two or three years. For we read in verse 4, Before the child shall have knowledge to cry, Mom, Father, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria would be taken away by the king of Assyria. Isaiah served notice to all who heard the name of his second-born son, Mahir Shael Hashbaz, that an enemy was coming, and the nation of Judah would be judged. Judah had rejected the Lord, Shiloh being the historical place in verses 4 through 8. And God promised to bring Assyria upon his people like a flood of waters overflowing the land. And yet we know the rest of the story. For Assyria would be stopped at the gates of Jerusalem and would be turned back. Mahir Shaal Hashbaz, judgment is coming. Thank you for joining me today. Bye-bye.